Are you having a hard time finding low price, undervalued stocks in this very hot stock market? If so, you're gonna love this video. With the S&P trading for around a 24 PDE, it can be a scary time to be a trader or investor. The last time we were close to these levels, the S&P 500 declined almost 30%. With the average PDE of the past 20 years of being around 19, that means the S&P 500 is around 20% overvalued. But not all stocks are in that overvalued territory. In this video, I'm going to share with you three stocks that are lower priced that I consider to be undervalued and a nice opportunity to trade options in them or to possibly buy them outright. All three of these stocks are currently trading for under $45 per share. They have proven that over time, they can consistently grow their dividends. And they're trading between what I believe to be a 50 to 70% discount based on their historic price to earnings. Please understand these three stocks are not my recommendations to you. They're simply stocks that I believe are undervalued and I'm currently trading in them right now. So make sure to do your own research before you trade in these stocks. I'm not going to go into great detail about these three companies, but I do want to share a few things about each one of them. For this first stock, notice here on the income statement that they have a nice history of consistent net income. In 2022, they did see a dip in their net income, but last year in 2023, was that income was right back up where it had been over the previous 10 years. When we compare where the stock is currently trading at compared to its recent history, we see that almost every metric is trading at a perceived discount. Looking at its earnings history, we see that its earnings per share are fairly nice and consistent. We see that it consistently seems to beat the estimate of the earnings per share. We see in this revenue column that the revenue is again nice and consistent and overall over the long term it's growing. When we look at its annual revenue, we see that over the past several years again it's seen nice consistent revenue growth and that's expected to continue in the next several years. Then looking here at Seeking Alpha, you see in the rating summary section it's rated as a buy with Seeking Alpha analysts and Wall Street and its quant rating is a strong buy. So overall, a company that looks really good to me and because of that, I've been doing a lot of option trades in it and even buying quite a bit in my outright stock ownership account. In case you haven't figured it out already, the company I'm referring to is Comcast. It's in the cable and satellite business. It's also in the communication services sector. They're known for their movies, TV shows, providing internet and cable TV services to businesses and individuals, as well as producing their own content and their theme parks. Overall, it's a company that I like very much, and I'm buying it outright in my stock outright ownership account, and I'm actually trading options in it right now. For those of you looking for a relatively inexpensive stock, this one's currently trading right at $43 per share. Comcast is actually the least undervalued stock of the three I'm about to share with you. So here's number two. The second stock I'm going to share with you is actually trading for under $35 per share, but it too, in my opinion, is very undervalued. In fact, I believe it's more undervalued than Comcast. But let's check out some of its metrics here. We see its earnings payout ratio is, in my opinion, in a good spot at around 20%. Its free cash flow payout ratio is, again, around 23, 24, 25%. And then notice its earnings per share in this top left corner. Over the past approximately 10 years, it's experienced very nice earnings per share growth. Its free cash flow has been a little more cyclical, but overall we see a nice inclining graph here as their free cash flow per share has gone up over time. In the top right here, we see their sales growth is pretty consistent, although it was lower in 2023, which might be one reason why the stock price is lower right now. Two more things I like to see. Here we see in the shares outstanding that overall the number of outstanding shares has been declining over the past 10 years. And then to the right of that, we see their sales, on the other hand, has been going up over the past 10 years. Another metric I like here is the return on equity. Notice that it has a nice high return on equity. Over the past 10 years, that return on equity has been around 19 to 20%. And then last year, it was actually 31%. So overall, company that although it's not perfect, I see a lot of things I like here. But what I like even more right now with GenPak is that it's trading for around 11 PDE, whereas its average PDE over the past 20 years is around a 17. That tells me that if I'm buying this stock outright, trading options in it, I'm trading in a potentially very undervalued company. Again, this is based on my research. I just showed you a few metrics here. So please, before you trade in a company like GenPak, please do your own research. But it is one you might want to consider adding to your list or doing some more research on it to see if it fits your risk parameters. As you see here, it's in the data processing and outsourced services industry. I like that it operates in a lot of different parts of the world. It provides information technology services in India, Asia, North and Latin America and Europe. So overall, a company I really like and I'm trading in it right now. And for those that are looking for inexpensive stocks, this might be one to consider. But that's just number two of my three favorite stocks I'm trading in right now that are trading for under $45 per share. This next stock is, in my opinion, potentially 70% undervalued 
over the long term. Let's look at a couple of the key metrics in this company before I reveal what the company is. One thing I always like to check, especially if it's a company that has some history, is how it performed during the Great Recession in 2007 through 2009. Notice that during that time, the company I'm about to share with you experienced an 8.3% sales growth. I like that during a very challenging time in the economy. Notice here what's happened to its dividend over the past 10 years. We see very nice dividend growth. If you're a dividend growth investor, this one might look interesting. Here we see several other metrics that I look at. In the top left corner, we see dividend yield. Notice over the past five years, it's been paying about a 1.85% dividend. However, right now with this beaten down stock price, that dividend is up to 2.61%. And then look at its price to earnings ratio over here on the top right. Over the past five years, its price to earnings ratio has been around a 13.6, but currently it's trading for an 8.2% price to earnings ratio. That looks interesting. Now I will share with you, I don't like to look at just the five year time frame. I actually like to look at the whole life of the company and definitely over the past 20 years, 15 years and 10 years. But the five year comparison on the price earnings ratio looks very interesting for this company. Here in the top left, we see the earnings payout ratio. Again, we see a nice, consistent, stable earnings payout ratio of at most around 30%. In the top left, we now see the earnings per share. Again, we see nice growth long term with this company. Here in the top left, we see the earnings per share growth. Notice that although some years have been lower, overall we are seeing nice growth. In the next 12 months, it's expected to grow earnings by 20%. Now we get to the shares outstanding. We do see a slight increase in shares outstanding. Over the past five years, we see it's been nice and stable of around 270 millions. And in the top right, we see total sales. Notice over the past 10 years, total sales have consistently increased no matter what's been going on with the company, no matter what's been going on with the environment. But the one exception is right here in 2016 where it had a very slight decrease. Now notice its operating margin. On average, I like to see around a 12% operating margin. However, this company is consistently generating an above average operating margin in its sector. So what is this company? Well, it's Open Text Corporation, ticker symbol OTEX. With its nice revenue growth, earnings per share stability, valuation, profitability, and dividend growth, it's a company I really like right now. I believe it's trading at a nice discount over the long term. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying it's gonna go up in price right now, but I believe if everything stays the same with the business, it continues to grow, continues to provide outstanding service and products, I believe over the long term, this company has the potential to go way up in stock price if it returns to its typical price to earnings levels. Again, just as a reminder, before you trade in any stock or ETF, please make sure to do your own research. These are three that I've looked at, I've researched, and I feel comfortable with them, but they may not be a fit for you. So please do your own research. The three companies I just share with you are just three of the 92 companies I shared with my patrons this past weekend that I believe are either fairly valued or undervalued. If you'd like to get that updated list every weekend, please consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see two of my most profitable stocks that I've traded options in over the past couple of years, check out the video at the link above entitled Two Great Stocks for Option Income. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.